Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Today we're taking a look at a traditional pattern pocket knife, the canoe model. Now, I've tried to do some research into when this model first came into existence. The only two pieces of information I was able to turn up is that it's a smaller, pocket-friendly version of a knife that was known as the cattle knife. And apparently, even though the canoe looks like something that would have been created in the mid to late 1800s. Uh, the most reputable source I found dates it to 1915. That's right, 1915. So a little odd there, but just a very quick, brief history. Let's get to the knife itself. This particular canoe pattern is a buck model and I have to say right off the bat it is very well made nicely contoured as you can see nickel silver bolsters the weird thing is when I look at it through the camera lens yep nickel silver bolsters but when i look at it with my eyes not through the camera lens i'm seeing lightly colored brass that's right so through the camera lens i'm seeing the actual nickel silver bolsters on either end without the camera in front of me yeah I normally see light colored brass. Just a weird, odd thing. Yep. And the thing I really like about this buck knife is that it has no sharp edges except on the blades. That's how it should be. And yes, this is unfortunately a made in china buck knife the good news is it still falls under bucks forever warranty if anything goes wrong send it back to them i mean if you horribly abuse the knife i don't think they're going to cover that under warranty but if it's a general failure or even a blade breakage where the knife wasn't abused, they'll cover it. However, since this is a made in China model, what they'll usually do is just replace the knife. Because if your buck is made in America, well, obviously they're going to be able to fix your knife most of the time at their headquarters. But if it's made in China, well, that's a different story. So expect a replacement if your buck is made in China. And I say that because a lot of individuals who prefer a traditional pattern knife, whether it's from buck or case or another company, usually end up building memories with that knife that last not just years, but decades. So just know right off the bat, if you end up building memories with a well-made knife from Buck that happens to be made in China, realistically, if something goes wrong after all those years or decades, Buck will most likely replace it instead of trying to repair it, because they can't repair it because they didn't make it here in America. It was made in China. And I actually saw a 
somewhat mildly popular YouTuber who went to the Buck factory on a tour, and he had this exact same model Buck knife, and his main blade had snapped off in a weird way. All they could offer him was a replacement, basically another canoe pattern, also made in China, which they happened to have on hand, apparently, with what looked like imitation stag scales, or a slightly bigger Made in America three-blade Stockman. He picked the Stockman. So, yeah, if it's made in China, most likely Buck will replace it under their forever warranty instead of trying to fix it. Just be aware of that. And I also have to mention that my Buck canoe came in fairly recently to me. I ended up ordering it off of eBay. And what I ended up with was new old stock. The seller did not disclose that. But that wasn't a problem for me. After all, new old stock, yeah, it just sat on a shelf for a long time. Specifically, Mine was apparently made in February 2008. Yep, it came with a date on the blister pack. So that was interesting. This guy sat on a shelf for several years, since early 2008. But okay, let's get into the knife. You might be wondering, well, why do they call it the canoe? Now, you can see the main blade above the handle and the bolsters. Pretend that main blade is not there. What does that look like now? A canoe, exactly. So, main blade, nail nick opener, and oh, it is stiff. And that's what you want because this is a two-blade slip joint model. You want it to be very stiff to open because that's your safety mechanism. You don't get an actual lock with a slip joint. So you want it good and stiff so that, yep, yeah, yeah, I'm applying pressure on the spine and it's not closing. It's not even moving. I will say that this particular knife is rather lightweight for a traditional pattern knife without a pocket carry clip. That means, oh yeah, if you wear a pair of thin shorts in summer and you toss this into the pocket, you're gonna feel it a bit yeah but for a traditional pattern yeah it's not too heavy but compared to a modern day one-hander with a pocket carry clip and a thumb stud disc or hole opener yeah it's it's a bit on the heavy side so just please keep that in mind as far as specs those are going to be in the description box below as usual. Please check that out when the video is over. Hollow grind. Mm -hmm. Buck knife. Nice spear point blade. And this is something that won't scare the public. But if you're in a city where, well, let's face it, if you're in a city where something like this is seen as a buoy knife used for ending the lives of people, there's another option. And it's right here on the other side. A nice short pen blade and yep china 
I have noticed that on buck knives that were recently made, even the ones made in China, you won't find China stamped on the blades, which is a little weird. I have noticed that. Um, the latest or currently made made in China buck knives tend not to have China anywhere on the knife, not even on the blade, which is a little odd. I'm guessing Buck's lawyers found some sort of loophole or maybe the law changed and they didn't have to put the country of origin on the blade. Okay, just something I've noticed. China. Again, nice nail nick opener. And this one is more sheeple friendly. Yeah, some people say, oh, that's a derogatory term. Well, whether or not it's derogatory, I'm sorry, it's accurate. I mean, yeah, it's just ridiculous that even a small knife like this is going to be seen. Well, not a small knife. A small blade like this, a little pen blade, is going to be seen as a weapon by hoplophobes or sheeple or a lot of people who really weren't raised better. Yeah, I said it. There it is. The reason why they call it a pen blade and not just on the canoe model is the blade itself is an extremely old, old style. Basically, back when people wrote with um, quill or feather pens and they dipped them in ink wells, well, this is the type of blade that was used all the way back then, back when A Christmas Carol was written and you had the fictional character of Mr. Scrooge. They used quill pens or feather pens, and on the opposite end of the feather, yeah, you'd have to cut to make it nice and sharp and slit it down the middle to hold the ink. So that's where this blade style comes from. You might be wondering, why is so much of it cut away from the back? Well, that's a little ingenious thing that you'll sometimes see with canoe pattern knives. Because In the open position with the main blade, you have this nickel silver bolster or brass bolster or whatever metal it's made from. You have that as an index to help prevent your finger from slipping onto the blade. Yeah. The smaller pen blade is short enough that you get a little bit of a cutout here for your index finger when using the larger blade. And that is very useful in any sort of cutting chore you're doing that you would normally use this type of knife for. And obviously no hardcore chores, guys. Yeah, so you've got that index right there for your finger with the bolster and the slight finger groove. So that helps prevent your finger from slipping onto the blade. But when you're using the smaller pen blade, here's the issue. And... The pen blade on this model is also very stiff, as it should be. Yep. 
See that? There is no index because you have the main blade folded down. It actually doesn't provide a groove and this bolster can't really be used as a good index for preventing your finger from slipping forward. This is just very smooth right here. So what's a good way to prevent your finger from slipping forward onto the blade or a decent way of preventing that from happening on something like a non-locking canoe pattern knife? Well, raise the cutting edge above. Yeah, notice how the cutting edge is not flush with the bottom of this unsharpened portion. It's raised above it. So when you're using it, if your finger slips a little bit, you're less likely to cut it it's not perfect, but you're slightly less likely to cut your finger when using the smaller blade. And of course, the smaller blade, extremely light duty tasks. The bigger blade for bigger tasks, but still well within the realm of light duty. Just cutting. And as stiff as it is, I don't recommend trying to use the tip as a bow drill. Don't do it. This is just cutting, cutting, and cutting. Lightweight, duty cutting chores for the main blade, and very lightweight, duty cutting chores for the pen blade. But yeah. These pins, they do not stick up above the wood grain handle. This shield, traditional buck model shield, does not stand up above the handles. Everything is nicely rounded, nicely contoured. Again, no sharp edges anywhere except the blades themselves. And yeah, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. I really like traditional pattern knives made by Buck, and they happen to be made in China. But you know what? If you're on a tight budget and you want to try out a particular traditional pattern knife, well, um, you could buy one made in America from case knives, although you're going to spend a lot more money than if you buy one of these from Buck made in China. And not just the canoe pattern, the trapper, the stockman, small stockman, small trapper. It's a good way to get your hands on a traditional pattern knife to try it out and maybe later on you can buy the more expensive case or you can buy a slightly more expensive made in America buck model. Yeah. And if we're talking about a young individual maybe a preteen, maybe a teen, who is very responsible and has been raised properly, yeah, something like this would be a good, inexpensive first knife. I mean, I have a Buck Trapper model that I bought maybe almost almost two decades ago. Yeah, I really like it. It's just as well made as this one. Yes, it's also made in China. There's no getting around it. But yeah, these are very well made buck knives. 
the traditional ones made in China, excellent value, and I absolutely recommend them. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Please stay safe out there because it is still dangerous.